Hi, everybody. We are going to be focusing on setting up a library program or a series on your LibPress site using the Summer Reading Club as an example. So today we're going to do things a little bit differently from what I normally do. I'm going to focus on the demonstration, which will just be step by step, um, as if I were working in a library and just saying, oh, it's June, it's Summer Reading Club time. Um, and then I'm going to be talking about the steps that I would do to create that on the website. So it's not talking about the Summer Reading Club, it's just talking about how to put that on the website. Um, so first of all, we have to consider the types of elements. And by that, I mean the information elements because each type of information <clears throat> is particular to a different kind of element on the website. So we're gonna be talking about that. That's called your content design. Um, and all the way through, by the way, I'm going to be talking about accessibility as well. Um, okay, then we're going to go on to create the series page and we're going to have a discussion about what the difference is between the recurring sets of events and the series page and what, how that is different from a regular type of page as well. Um, then we're going to add the events, uh, single events and a recurring set of events. And then we're going to talk about how to promote um, <laughs> your events using the website and how that can then be extrapolated to social media. So it's the same kind of principles and we're going to be talking about best practices for images and alt text and things like that. And then right at the end, I'm going to be talking about the optional elements for your website. So the registration form is now free um, for all LivePress members. So uh, I shared that registration form that was created by another LivePress member site. Um, and you can request that I do that for you. You can also create Google Forms, uh, but that can have some issues for how to set them up on your page. And then we're gonna talk about the RSVP, which is the ticketing service that we uh, offer for a really nominal fee, but it's an add-on service. So not all of you have that. Um, but then after that, we'll have a discussion. Okay. So, okay, so this, for those of you who, who don't know, this is our Maple demo site. It's a fake library site that I use to demonstrate best practices. Uh, we also use this as our testing site. So some of the things are a little bit weird, but it's all fake. You can see that I do have the example of a summer reading club right here. That's, I think, the one that Manitoba normally uses um, and how this is set up. But we are going to start from scratch today. Um, okay, hold on one sec. Okay, so what we're going to do is first of all, just pause for a second and talk about the different elements that the that we need to consider for the website. So for instance, we need that brochure type information, all of that information about the Summer Reading Club. So it might include your sponsors. You might be talking about how it's sponsored by the um, BC Summer Reading Club or TD, and it could include marketing details as in why somebody would want to join the Summer Reading Club and just general information that you wouldn't necessarily include on every single event listing. That's what I call your brochure information, your marketing information. And then you might need a registration form. Um, this would be something that uh, you would want to consider for the entire program. So this would be maybe your waivers and your, your um, consent form and things like that. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit later about why you would choose a registration form versus the RSVP add-on in tech. Um, and then the other types of events that we're going to be including, there are going to be different types of events. So if you think about your summer reading club, you have things like your weekly check-ins, but you also have your standalone events. So maybe you've got an entertainer coming in and you're wrapping that up in your summer reading club. So there's going to be a magic show. So you want to include that with your series as well, but it's not part of your weekly check-ins. And you may want to have a launch event or a finale event. And those are standalone events that aren't part of a recurring set of events. And you might wonder how you're going to handle that when you're talking about your series. So I'm gonna show you all of those different things. 
Um, and then afterwards, there are going to be different promotional uh, elements that you want to include on your website. For instance, your slideshow banner, you may want to consider putting it also on your main menu. You can see here that I do have one for the Summer Reading Club, along with my other programs. Um, and then uh, we also have this front page uh, widget for the events calendar. Um, the events calendar is the actual name of the tool, and I'm going to be calling it tech for the rest of this webinar. So TEC tech for the events calendar. Okay, so this is one thing that I would recommend for your website. Now I do know that um, you have different styles uh, for how you're going to present your information on your front page, but this is a way to create a really dynamic front page because this gets updated from your back end. Um, so it's part of your calendar, but in this brief list view, that can be really, really useful. You can see that I've also included closed days um, in the calendar, and this is a way to really um, optimize your front page with uh, dynamic content that people will learn that they can come and look at and say, oh, the tea party is postponed. That's too bad. But they can quickly check here and they can see what's going on. So I just wanted to point that out to you and we'll talk about this again later as well. So I am going to go to what I would do first, and I would create the series page. Now, I know a lot of you would start with your events, but I'm going to start with the series page. And first of all, I'm going to talk about why you wouldn't want to just create a page. Uh, so for instance, right here, I have a link to a page called the Summer Reading Club. This is a page. This is just a straightforward static page on your website. So you can see I've got all of the Summer Reading Club information here that I want to include as my brochure type information. And right up here, I have this note saying, go to our library events calendar to find events. But that means you're forcing somebody to then try and figure out how to get there. Like, where is that? Um, why do I have to go to another page? You don't have to do that. You can do what's called a series page and have the bro brochure type of information along with all of the upcoming events. And that's what's so great about the series page. And also when I'm saying series, Think program, because that's how we talk about it in the library world. So I can show you that at my fake library, um, I have a fake learn to draw series. And by the way, I did go to art school and these are all my line, line drawings. So this is my friend's dog, Sadie. And we also have my cats here, Missy and Davy. Um, but you can see that this is my brochure information and this is all the information coming up, all the events coming up that are attached to it. What's great about this is you have one URL that's very, very specific. I've got a couple of different recurring sets of events. I've got the draw dogs and I've got the draw cats and they're really easy to set up, but I've attached them both to this one series. Now, I'm going to go up here. I'm already logged in. So this is my administration bar. I'm going to click on edit series so you can just see how that's set up. So you've got your brochure information. And then down here, you have your different set of events that are showing up. And you can tell that it's part of a series um, because of this little symbol here. So this indicates that these are all an individual series. And you can also note here that you can edit individual events, you can view them, or you can convert to single. That's going to come up in a little bit. So anyways, let's just start right now. I'm gonna create a new series. You can also go into events, see series here. You can see here that I've got all of my events and I can go to add new. In fact, this is probably better that I come to this list of series right here because I want to see if I have an old summer reading club from 2023 that I can reuse. Now, I don't, but I bet you do. And I bet your page looks very different from this. I bet it looks pretty crazy. Um, you bet you have tons of events. Um, or tons of series that have been created because when you create a recurring set of events first, uh, tech automatically appends a series based on the title of your recurring events. Um, so you probably have so many in here. So this is why I wanted to focus on managing your series. 
if you look at, on your page and you've, I've only got eight items, but if you have a whole set and it's really messy, contact me and I will help you out and I'll help clean it up. So I've got some of the Summer Reading Club stuff that I set up as information only, but I don't have an old Summer Reading Club here that I can reuse. Otherwise I would edit it. So I'm going to add new and I'm just going to start from scratch. So I'm going to call it the Summer Reading Club and I'm not going to call it 2024 because I want to reuse this in the future and besides it's implied that it's current because everything on your your website should be current um okay so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back there I'm going to grab all of that stuff that I had from my page um and I'm going to just pop it over into the series page so I'm going to go to edit page I'm going to oops I wonder how I did that okay Control A, Control C, and then I'm going to go here and I'm just going to pop it in there. Okay, so what I always do when I'm at this page is I make sure that all of my elements um, are here. Show series title on event pages and calendar views. Yes, that's that little um, icon. Uh, so we want to show that all of our events are part of a series. Um, the author can be useful if you're trying to... Um, uh, if you want to push it to somebody else to manage, and that's a useful way of managing your events. Um, and then I don't think I've got anything else. Oh, I can add events to series here. That can come in handy. Just be aware of that. And down here, you can see that I don't have any series attached to it yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we can best organize this information to make it accessible. So for those of you who have gone through the overhaul process with me, what I have always emphasized is clarity um, and using your headings appropriately and just making sure that the information is clear as possible. So let's go through that really quickly. Um, okay, so BC Summer Reading Club, I don't need this. Do I need to use World of Curiosities? I mean, that's the theme for this year. Does that make sense? Am I going to really be focusing on that? Probably not at my library. So I'm just going to take that out because I've already got Summer Reading Club in the title. Um, so remember, your heading one is your title. So anything that's in this area is going to be a heading one. So the next heading is going to be a heading two. So be curious about reading. Oh, we don't need to have this anymore. Um, but what we might wanna put here is check below on this page for upcoming events. Okay, that's very clear. I like having this kind of really quick sentence up at the top um, to just kind of catch people and give people information about what's on the page. Um, but this next section is not very clear. Um, you may want to just give the information about how to register for the Summer Reading Club up at the top. So I am going to take this information down here and put it up here because you want to make it as clear as possible. Okay, so those are actually steps and this was the heading. So we're going to put that up here. Okay, so, so how to join the Summer Reading Club. I overuse exclamation points all the time, so I'm going to take that one out. I'm going to make this a heading too. So how to join. Uh, do we need to repeat this? Probably not. So let's take that out because it's implied. And then in headers, you don't usually put the... Um, colon information because you just don't. So these are actually steps or parts of it. So we want to make this a list. Um, that's important for accessibility because you don't want to, if you have a list type thing, you want to make sure that it's a list because that helps people with using screen readers to know that this is all information that's kind of part of the same set of information. So right here, register. That's cool, but you probably want to uh, make it even uh, more clear using our, re okay, our online registration form. And then if you also have a print version, you would want to include that here too. But now we want to link this registration form, which I've already set up. 
and we're going to link it. And here's the magic of using the um, editing area. So I have called it the registration form, or actually I've called it Summer Reading Club registration. And I just started typing that, it came up, that's the one that I want. I am going to grab it and I'm going to apply it. And there we go. I have linked the registration form really easily from this page. This is great. This is a perfect use of the series page. I have all the information on here. So keep a record of your reading. You probably want to elaborate on what that means or how your library does it. Check below for events. Some may require registration. Mm -hmm, yep, but you know what? We already have that up here. You know, it's your website, you feel free to add all the information that you feel that you need, come to our CRC wrap up party. Um, you may wanna link to it, you, you may wanna set it up and link to it directly. directly. Um, and then here's the, the other types of brochure information where it, uh, I'm trying to get at like what the, red, what the Summer Reading Club is all about. So um, how would you have, a, heading for this that would kind of describe what this information is because otherwise it's just hanging out and it doesn't really make sense um how to so we have how to join up there how to participate how about that um which you know workshop this because keeping a record of your reading that's sort of like participating um anyways you get what i'm getting at okay so we're going to call this a heading to as well, because this, this is two kind of different areas of information. So what I'm going to do is do four kids here, but this is going to be a heading three because the heading three is under um, the heading two and it's part of this area. And then over here for parents, this is also going to be part of this content area. So we want to call this a heading three as well. Okay, so down here we've got information about the virtual uh, summer reading club. Um, let's do, let's call this online reading club. And we're going to call this a heading two because this is a whole brand new section. Okay. So, and down here, this is the sponsorship information that I was talking about. Let's identify this as a different area. What I'm going to do, I don't have a little um, hard rule uh, option in my toolbar. I don't know why. I'm going to just add it right here. So I'm going into the text view. Don't worry about this if it looks confusing. For those of you who know how this will work, you can just add in this HR. This is this is the code to add the hard rule if you don't have it. Then you go back into your virtual and you can see a hard rule has been added here. Let's save this or publish it. And now we're going to view the series. And you can see all of those different headers look very different because of the way that I have the code set up in the background. So this is how um, this is how it looks. If you don't like how your headings look, if you find that this doesn't look heading enough for you, remember this was a heading three, let me know because that's something that I can do. What I don't want you to do is go in here and use these things and change them up because this is going to cause a lot of problems with the rest of your pages. Um, and this is not how you create um, that necessary code in the background that people who use um, uh, other accessible technologies will need to navigate their page. Um, so if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I have a whole area on my live press manual that talks about accessibility. So you can refer to that. Um, okay, so just back to here, you can see this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna come back to this and just make sure um, at the end that everything is working the way that I'm hoping to. And you can see that all of the events that I attach to this series are going to actually be on this page. And we've got this short URL that will be perfect to use for your programming. Um, okay, and the reason why you would want to attach it 
always to your series page is because it will always show the upcoming information. So if you have a whole list of events coming up, somebody can look at this page and say, oh no, I'm not available this Friday, but oh wow, you've got other events that are coming up next week. Those ones I can go to. So that's why you don't want to use um, individual events necessarily for your social media. Always pointing to um, a series page might be a little bit more um, efficient for you. Um, okay, so uh, now I've got this already. The next step would be um, to go to events. So we're going to create a new event. Okay, so first I'm going to start with a, um, let's say the series launch. So I'm going to call it Summer Reading Club launch party okay exclamation points let's maybe not do that <laughs> okay and then you'll have all of your information here about what to expect um so um uh come and check out our displays for summer reading and get your reading booklet Okay, um, et cetera, et cetera. I am going to set it up for, let's say I'm always going to have events happening on Tuesdays and I'm gonna have my launch party next week on Tuesday. Um, and okay, here I'm going to make it, let's say I'll start at 11.30 a.m. and go to 2.30. So a long drop-in period uh, just for the launch date. So this, area is just talking about this event. If you are doing a recurring set of events, don't change this. We're going to talk about this in a moment. You would be adding uh, schedule multiple events here, and this is how you're going to be adding dates. Um, so this is just talking about the particular event that you're dealing with right now. So right down here, I'm not going to do create a venue or an organizer, but you may want to do so. And if you leave the cost down here blank, it will just you know, not at a cost. And that's generally what people do. Um, if you really want to say that it's free, you can put in a zero and that will come up as cost free. But that might be confusing if you don't do it on every event. This is where you would add your RSVP, your registration, if you subscribe to that service. Um, so if you're interested in that and you don't have it, you would uh, contact me and let me know that you want more information about it. But I do have a, a lot of information and I've updated it um, quite extensively in the Live Press Manual. Okay, so what I am also going to do is take a look here and make sure that I've included everything that I need to. Now I have optimized my view for editing this. What I mean by that is I've gone into the screen options up here. I have clicked on the things that I need to know um, and I have not selected the ones that I don't use. So I don't use the excerpt or the slug. Those are things I'm not gonna talk about and I don't use tags. I would recommend not using tags. Um, event categories are important um, and I can explain why. Um, all these other ones uh, that I have clicked on here are very useful, but the other ones are not. So I have also moved them around on my page based on what I think is most important. So your page is probably not going to look like this, but you can move things around if you want, and that can make it easier for you. So I have already made sure that this is all useful. Um, now, right now, I'm just gonna take a look. This is your URL. If you think that this is way too long, you can edit it right now, but once you've published it and start working with it on your website, I wouldn't recommend changing it because you may have a link to this page and then you'll break your link. So just be aware of that. Um, okay, so down here, I have put featured image up here because I think it's very important. So I'm going to set a featured image um, and I don't have the one that I want, so I'm going to upload it right now. Um, I have, where are my the images? 
So SRC launch, I've already has, so this is from the summer reading club this year, and I've decided that this is a great one for the launch. So I'm going to check this one. I'm going to attach it and I'm going to also right now edit the title SRC launch party, launch party icon. And then I'm going to do the alt text because this is very important. Um, so this is a longer conversation. I'm just going to demo what I'm going to do right now. I'm not going to say image of because when a screen reader is going through the page, it already knows that it's an image of something. So it's already going to say that. So I am just going to put, um, but I can put in drawing because I think that that evokes what it's trying to say. So drawing of an anchor in the sea and I'm going to set the featured image and if you forget to do that what you would do is you would click on it once it's in there and then you can always add the alt text right afterwards um, okay and now I'm going to select the series that I already created so that's the summer reading club that's very important um, then I am going to add the category for kids so it'll show up in my kids area because on my main menu I have that as an option a filtered option for kids I am not going to put summer reading club as an event category because it's already a series this is your event status they're all going to be scheduled unless you cancel or postpone it and that's how you have it show up on the front page with that red and then this I'm going to say this is a feature event because it will show up a little bit differently in the calendar. And because it's a single event and because it's important, I'm going to um, consider this a feature event. So now I'm going to publish this. And now right away, I'm going to add um, my weekly check-ins. Uh, so I'm going to call it, I'm just going to make it a very long title, Summer Reading Club. Mm, yeah, check-in you can do whatever you want. Okay, so um, come and visit and see our displays and get your craft material for this week's activity, etc, etc. I am going to say that that's happening on the Tuesday from let's say 11 to 12 and now I'm going to schedule multiple events and I'm going to say that it's going to happen weekly uh, on the Tuesdays but it is going to end don't ever click never, by the way, that is going to create a million events into the future. Um, I would always suggest creating an end date of like the end of your semester or school period or um, the end of the year and then create a new set of events um, that's updated information and always attach it to the series. Um, but just don't click on never, it's going to create a real problem. So you can do after, so if you know that there's going to be 10 events, but that can, you know, um, you have to know how many events you're doing. Uh, I'm gonna click on weekly and I'm going to uh, say that it's going to end August 12th. Okay, so I'm not going to add an exception, even though I know I'm going to take a vacation in that time, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that event, um, that particular event as cancelled so that somebody can always see it in the calendar um, instead of thinking like, oh, they just forgot to put it in there, but is it happening or not? So I would, I wouldn't add um exceptions or exclusions unless it was over the Christmas period or holiday period where it's really obvious. Oh, thank you for pointing out that it ends in 2025. Good note to everybody. <laughs> All right. Okay. So it was trying to be helpful thinking that I was creating a very long series. Now what's going to happen? Oh, and right here, I'm just going to shorten this up right now. Okay. But it doesn't really matter. 
Okay, so right now, if I don't attach it to a series right now, what's going to happen is that tech is going to assume I'm creating a series based on this, and it's going to create Summer Reading Club check-in series, but that is not what I want. I want to attach it to the Summer Reading Club. So do you see what's happening? You can create different types of events and attach it all to one series. Um, I'm also going to set um, an image. I'm going to uh, grab the one. Yeah, this is the one that I wanted to use. Um, I'm just going to switch this up. I don't think title is very important necessarily, but sometimes it comes up. So, uh, so the title is weekly check-in icon. And then the alt text would be drawing a magnifying glass. Um, set featured image. Okay, series is correct. And kids and everything else is good. Hooray, publish. Now, let's just go to the front page. And we're going to check. Oh, remember, I didn't. Um, uh, this is still that old page. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly find it this way. Summer Reading Club. Okay, so Summer Reading Club, where's the series? So this doesn't tell me which one it is, but I know that I can go to the launch party and then I can go to the series from this page just to check it out. And everything is looking great. Here's that featured one that shows up. And if you have that magic show and you make that a featured one too, that will be differentiated and you'll probably have different icon in there. You can see how great this looks. What I'm going to do right now though, is I'm going to update my main menu item because um, I don't want this to show up, the old page to show up. So I'm going to go in to um, menus right here. So that's the easiest way to get to it. You can see that this is your main menu. Um, you may have to select it here. You're going to scroll down. This indicates where things are in your menu. By the way, I know I'm talking really fast. All of this is in the live press manual as well. Um, you're going to scroll down here to programs and events. And this is that page right here. I'm going to just remove it. So then I'm going to scroll up and over here, you're going to see series. If you don't, it's because your page is not optimized. You want to go up here and you want to select series and then you will find it. Okay. So down here, I'm going to do series summer reading club. That's the right one. We're going to add it to the menu. We're going to scroll down, grab it and drag it. And I'm going to put it non-alphabetically right above because it's important. Um, and then you may want to create a little subsection called um, programs for kids or something like that. I don't have a lot of programs at my fake library. This is going to work. Okay. So now Maple Demo site, Summer Reading Club, it now goes to the series page. Now at the end of the season, what I would do is I would update this page. By the way, none of these will show up because they'll be done and over because um, it only shows up coming. I would update this page and say, 2024 is over, stay tuned for next year. And that way you can always have this advertised as like, yay, my library always does a summer reading program. Um, check, this is how you're gonna find out about it. So you're letting people know that this is a regular program and it will be updated as needed. And that's also what's great about this page. Okay, so what's next on my list to do? I've talked about, um, how to do different types of events, and I've started talking about the promotion. What I'm going to talk about now is how to add that slide banner in there. Um, oh, sorry, just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's this area. So um, remember, I've created summer reading uh, program banners for you. Um, if you're interested in them, here's the BC one. You don't have to love my banner, but if you don't have time for to make one yourself, and by the way, you should make it um, according to my description in the Lipress manual, just for best practices. Here's the Manitoba one. If you use the TD Summer one, if you don't, you can create a new one yourself. 
what you would do is you would just grab this and throw this in here. Now you're not done because you want to add your alt text and you want to add your link um, so that this works properly. So what you need to do is save in between every step because this is really finicky. So now we come back in here and we hit the little edit button and the title is your alt text. So again, Doing alt text is a bit of an art, but you just do the best you can. You want to write down all the information that is necessary for somebody using a screen reader. So this is the, um, okay, normally I say don't use click, but in this case, you're letting somebody know that this is an active image um, that you click on. I, you, you know that I've already included, um, uh, a little image saying click for details to let the viewer know that this is clickable and will go to the series page. You need to let the person using assistive technology know that as well. So click for info about the summer reading club. And I think that that's probably pretty good. So again, you're noticing that I'm not um, including the information about the little characters on there. Um, we can do that. Uh, again, this is this is a conversation. I are on the side of using a little bit more information, but in the slide banner, you want to make it really, really clear. Um, Okay, and we're not going to do image of, but um, uh, we're going to do drawings. Well, see, that's not going to make sense, but we're going to do it anyways. Okay, drawings of young children looking at bookcase. So that's pretty good. Okay, now we're going to save this. And then this is where the magic of WordPress doesn't work because this is an add-on. We need to go and find the series um, URL. So I'm going to go to the Maple Demo site. I'm going to go to my Summer Reading Club, make sure it's again, the right um, link. I'm gonna copy this and then go back into the Slideshow Manager, edit it and pop that in there. It's not gonna pull it up for you like I showed you here. And then I'm gonna save the collection. Uh, by the way, this is something I just wanted to, uh, to demonstrate for you. For those of you who have Gale and have always wondered how to, to promote it, I have tried to figure out how to do that. Let's consider it programming. Um, you, you know that it happens every six weeks for registration. If you click on it, I have decided to try doing this kind of thing. So if you're interested in this, check it out, steal it for your library too, um, because this could be a way to get those statistics up and to offer adult programming in a really easy way. I'm gonna try to do this for every intake. You can come back to the Maple Demo site and use this information. Uh, let me know if you really like this because I'm starting to experiment with different types of promotion for the databases. Okay. What am I going to talk about next? I have talked about the Maple Demo site um, slide banner. And so let's go back to it. This was the one that I just added and you can see this links to this series page. What you can also do is this is like the summer reading club. All the events are showing up in here, but I may want to just put in a special little note about the summer reading club right here under upcoming events, just to make it even more specific for everybody. I'm gonna go into the Maple demo site um, and I'm gonna go to the highlights because that's how the front page is set up. I'm going to go to that second column that's called upcoming events. I'm gonna edit and I am going to pop this in here, center it. You know that I never want you to center anything on the website unless it's in your highlight columns. And I'm going to, by the way, also, this is a heading two, just so you know, this is the only place on the website where it's a heading two. Everywhere else, this is the heading one. Okay, so here you want to put in, um, check out, oh, maybe summer, reading club is now 
open and you're going to link this with the magic summer. Okay, so so much has come up. I still have that old page. This is the one I want, Summer Reading Club series, and I'm going to apply it here. So again, why am I doing this and not click here for more information? Because it's redundant. And also if you did Summer Reading Club and then um, linked the click here, that's bad accessibility. What that means is somebody who's using assistive technology, who's looking through your page and they're just looking for the links, they know that there's a link for the Summer Reading Club somewhere on that front page. So they've set it up just to scan through all the links. They're going to just hear a lot of click here's, read more's, more information, read more. And you don't want that. You want to have every link be very specific to where it's going to go. So. That's why I would always say that um, the high or the the linked text should match the page that you're going to in some way, because otherwise it gets very confusing. Okay, so I'm going to update this, and I'm going to then go to the Maple demo site, and you can see that there it is. Um, all right, so this looks pretty good. I think that I've done most of what I wanted to talk about. It is 11.45 right now. I'm going to quickly talk about the optional information. Um, so Summer Reading Club, I'm going to go to it. I'm just going to show you the registration form. So this is the form that I sent out last week uh, where I thought it could be um, really useful for you. And what it also included in the example that I sent out was program details like which course do you want to register for? That could be useful, but this is something uh, that you may want to instead put on your, your um, if you have the RSVP option, you might want to put that in your registration page. Um, this is something that I'm going to just touch on quickly because I've updated the Lipress manual with how to use the RSVP with series. So what you're going to find out is that it's really hard to add a um, RSVP for individual um, uh, events that are in a series or, or sorry, in a recurring set of events. So you can see that I'm going to edit this event and I want to create a registration form for this particular check-in. And right down here, you're going to get all these notes saying that it, you can't do it. So ignore these. Um, this is because uh, the events calendar group um, is made for commercial enterprises and we're just trying to make it work for our website and we're not or for the libraries and we're never going to open up that payment option because that's just too much but we have made it work and i can give you examples of um websites um, that have made it work really well. I can show you here on my tea party example where we have made it so you can create a guest RSVP and once that gets full you can see there's only one remaining and it once it gets full then I have this wait list rating waiting here to to work and you can work with that. I'm not going to go into the whole details of this because it's not everybody has it but if you're curious about it let me know and also check out in the live press manual. Um, but if so, there's a couple of ways of handling this problem of the series um, and how to add it. So what some libraries have done is they've created this standalone event to go with their series and they might call it the registration page. So they just have one page that's for registration or sorry, one event, a single standalone event. Um, that's just for registration, because on a single event, it's no problem to add an RSVP. So you can do that. So you can see new RSVP, you can add it right here, and you can go through the instructions on the in the manual. Um, so you can use it that way. And then on your series page, so what you would do is you would grab the link for that individual event. So right here, and then you would go to the series page. 
and you can add a link to it like we did with the registration form here. You can add a link saying register for all events in the series here, and you can do it that way. Um, however, if you've already set up your recurring events and you're like, ugh, I just want to set up one RSVP for this particular one for whatever reasons, you can, you can still do that. So you can go in here, uh, sorry, edit series on your series page. If you scroll down, you can see where all of the events are added there. And right over here, you can say, see convert to single. So if for whatever reason, one of these, you wanted to just add your RSVP already, and you didn't want to go through all the trouble of creating a new one, you can convert to single and then add your RSVP. Yes, you have to do that for every single one. So sorry, tech is working on a solution for this, but this is the way that it works right now. So I've given you a couple of options for that. Um, okay, so I'm not going to talk any more about that because, um, again, not everybody has it, but let me know if you're curious or if you have any questions. Uh, let's see if I have anything more to talk about. Um, no, I think I'm going to stop here for the recording. So uh, thank you for this portion of the webinar. Uh, but we're going to open up discussion.